Oops. It is January the 24th, 2015. I am Dana Durnford, also known as the Nuclear Proctologist.org. Smurfed that one up today, did we? <laughs> what the hell is going on, Dana? We'll get it. It's hard to do so much with so little sometimes, but we are privileged to be able to even come out and talk about it as Canadians. I want to jump right into and explain again about Fukushima. Coming up here in a few moments, we'll wind that down right away here. That was just a quick intro. Here it goes, it's going, it's going, it's going, it's gone. <laughs> and so, this is an important stream. I don't want to waste any time. I don't want to digress. I don't want to lose track of what we want to cover tonight. And at the same time, we still got to come over and say hi to everybody right quick. And it always takes a few minutes for us to warm up to these live streams. And hi to everybody. And we'll bring that up where we're at it. There we go. I probably got that smurfed up. I could do better. Dana, you could do better. Okay, I will then. Here we go. A little bit better. Well, now, Dana, we can't see ya, and that's okay, too. I'll fix that. I fixed this. I fixed that. I not fixed this. I not fixed that. And that's okay. We'll sort it out when we get a chance here in a moment. We'll do it the hard way. <laughs> Off to a rough start. Hi, everybody. Hi, Austin. Night Wave, Candice. And, of course, it's so hard to do these live streams. A lot of people can't understand how much time and energy and effort and work it takes and certainly uh, the hounds of Fukushima can and good night to Candace and Strontium Kate Aquarius query old charm I'm trying to get everything to work here sometimes it works sometimes it don't and sometimes sometimes it doesn't matter right and so at the same time I gotta fix this Let's see if that'll work. Because sometimes that works, right? Wow, that's like crazy stuff today. Okay, that's because we got it set up to the other one. Close enough for me. I can still say hi to everybody from that angle. Hi, everybody. And the live stream, like I say, it takes a few minutes to get warmed up, get going. Hi, Louis. Thank you, everybody. Alex. Tracy. Yeah, hi everybody. I'm just looking through it. Hi Shanigan, Elaine. Gil. I'm way off track. Hi Corey Miller. Formerly from Haida Gwaii. Just cruising. Nep Killer. Hi everybody. I'm not going to get everybody. Austin. CJ. Albert. Alex. And because it can take forever for me to get through all this. Hi darling me. Thank you, Gary, Jack. Good night, everybody. Here we go. Let's get on with it. Because this is such an important thing anyway to say hi to everybody. And I don't know why, but there it is. It's doing that to me. <coughs> Which is kind of works okay for when I'm doing this. <laughs> and that's we'll stick with that. <laughs> or not. Meanwhile. Meanwhile. We gotta come back over to the other one for one second to start to show off proper. And because this is playing so hard ball on me tonight, I'm gonna to go this route. There we go. We'll move that over. Leave that right there. That'll help. That'll get things settled away. So we got a big, big, huge, massive, incredible, unbelievable headline. That's not the one we're looking for. Worst wildlife die off. I hate everything about Firefox now. But world's worst wildlife die off recorded, ever recorded, anywhere on Earth, on their way on the West Coast. And experts were not just talking marine die offs yet, yeah, it's a real big deal. There are many more species that are getting sick, facing the possibility of extinction. And is it some sort of toxin that's there? So all of the scientists uh, 
None of them acknowledged Fukushima. They all said there's a massive die-off. Don't know what it is. They didn't know what Ebola was, so they took a picture of it and everybody worked it out. They can't get a picture of the pathogen or the virus, that mystery pathogen and the mystery virus. When it comes to the Pacific Ocean, for some reason, when it comes to the species. A terrorist does it. They can have all the pictures you want, hundreds of thousands of them in every 24 hours. So sea star wasting disease. Um, so, a researcher went out there on the coastline of British Columbia. If I can ever get to it. Sometimes you can't. Sometimes you don't want to, I guess. Dana. Dana, if you want to tell the story, you already be set up. Dana. Okay. That's the map of the coastline of British Columbia. All the red and green arrows are where the expeditions, the five expeditions covered. 15,000 miles, 260 days. And it was done in a little zodiac. And what it showed was instead of a normal, healthy ecosystem, it was naked. So instead of looking every square millimeter full of life like it would normally look, look throughout the coastline, it was naked. So here's the coastline of British Columbia. We're kind of backwards today. But what we're seeing is that, and, and these are the same place, right? This is uh, Louise Narrows and the Queen Charlotte, the Heidegger. You can see that there's nothing on the rocks. That's before Fukushima, that's after Fukushima, after Fukushima, after Fukushima, before Fukushima, after Fukushima, pre-Fukushima, post-Fukushima, pre-Fukushima, post-Fukushima, all from the same spot. Pre-Fukushima, post-Fukushima, pre-Fukushima, post-Fukushima, and you would get up to 80 or 75 of these leatherbacks, sea star fish, and there was none there. Now, it's, it's not just, like scientists are telling you it was only 18 species that are missing, but what I'm showing you is the documentation that they're all missing, plus all the other species are missing, 600 algae. All 78 species of starfish were missing. We only seen three in any lots, but you can see everything was naked. So this is what it looked like pre-Fukushima. That's what it looked like after Fukushima. We took those pictures, 200,000 pictures, on five expeditions. Throughout the whole coastline. I can go on and on. We're not going to do that tonight. But we've done that whole coastline. 260 days. 15,000 miles. I never bother mentioning our research because it, that would have to bring up the topic of Fukushima. And so they don't want to talk about Fukushima. Let's come back to that for one second. Let's scroll down that. They call it the sea star wasting disease hitting a bigger range of species. So they don't even know what it is, but they call it a sea star wasting disease, and now they say it's hitting more species. The sea star <laughs> wasting disease is taking out everything, whales and porpoises and birds and mammals and animals. Don't know what it is, though. I'm not going to try to figure it out. Don't really care. And if you don't understand what that really means, let me run through a couple of quick headlines for you. Rain with 20 million particles of radioactive iodine, 131 per liter. So if that was falling on your continental coastline, which it was, at Simon Fraser University, September 19, 2012, talking about the study after Fukushima. <coughs> so the whole ocean was getting hit with that. So think about a snowstorm when you're driving through a snowstorm. What's it like? Is it just snowing on that side of the road? Only on your side of the road? Only on... So normally the whole community is full of snow at the same time, right? Because it's a snowstorm. Okay. So the 20 million particles of radioactive iodine, 131, there was 10 times more 132. Iodine 131 is just a tracer. But there was uh, 30 times more 133 iodine. There was 31 times more iodine 129 with a 15 million year half-life. So, multiply 20 million particles by 31 per liter, and then take all the rain that landed for the, for the next five years, but just take for the next couple of weeks after the accident. Just take for a couple of days after the accident. Okay. Now, there was a continuous plume all the way across the ocean. Still is. 
It's still hemorrhaging into the environment, it's still hemorrhaging into the ocean. Chernobyl was a burp compared to Fukushima. See, a melted reactor is different. Okay, but let me get back on track. So, think of a snowstorm across your country. Think of that. Right across your country, visibility is a quarter mile. And it's snowing. Don't stop. Okay, now, that's because you can see snow, but you can't see radiation. Now, think about an invisible snowstorm across the ocean. Now, think about that snowstorm when it hits the ocean and it's falling through the water table. It's not snow where it just turns into water. It's radiation. So, when it's suspended through the upper and lower levels of the ocean, then the ocean looks like a snowstorm on land, is what I'm trying to portray to you. Now, you know, I was a commercial diver for 14 years, and you do six hours a day, say, on the ocean floor. But you can suspend yourself right there at any depth you want to. Just go to sleep out of it. Don't do it with a regulator in your mouth. You need a Pegasus, a full face to do it. You can go to sleep. You need lots of air. It's probably okay to, to tie yourself onto a beach line or a bunch of kelp if you can find it. And so everything is swimming through this snowstorm that's in the ocean, but at the same time it's circling the planet over and over and over and over and over. So let me run through some of these headlines. 40 million beckles of iodine-131. And iodine is just a tracer. And if iodine is there, everything else is there. Anything is there, everything else is there. April 16 forecast showed radioactive clouds stretching from Texas to Canada. But that was April 15, 2011. Hot particles bombard the west coast of the U.S. and Canada, but they also fill up the ocean too. And that a gram of this stuff produces more radioactive atoms than every grain of sand on every beach on the planet. Stick with me. Hot particles found at two of the three U.S. monitoring stations during April, including Boston, uh, Seattle, throughout Canada, Vancouver, British Columbia. Think about how to use fire balloons uh, in Japan. And he sent these balloons over with explosive devices and they were found throughout Canada and America. That's well known. But no, no, Dana radiation can't make it. Right? So, but anyway, radioactive iodine all of a sudden, which is a tracer, if you found that and everything else was there. But see, what they done was they just said it was just iodine 131. But iodine 131 is just a tracer. So is cesium. It's just a tracer. It's irrelevant uh, compared to curium and plutonium and americium and neptunium. So these are just tracers. They're telling you that to brainwash you and lull you into, oh, well, they never found no more iodine. <laughs> 131. Well, how come, Sonny? Well, it only got an eight-day half-life. Oh, I said, pretty cool. Those scientists are pretty cool. Made poison only lasts for eight days. But in reality, there was 31 times more iodine 129 for starters, with a 29, uh, 15.9 million year half-life and a half-life is times 10 so if it's 15 million you gotta multiply it by 10 not that that even matters to anybody like me or you but it does matter to the future generation and everybody else trying to and the eight other million species on the planet it's been a long day give me a break hang on let's keep rolling 76 trillion becquels now was a minute uh, april 2011 it never stopped, right? But that was 23,000 times higher than previously announced. Okay. U.S. government models of Fukushima cesium, 137 particles covering northern hemisphere. So that's a tracer. And just tracer only, it covered North American, the northern hemisphere. But that model is only based upon 40 days. It's only based upon a couple of days releases. And let's run over for a second and talk about the reactors. Let's talk about the reactors. Okay, let's not do it on that page. Let's come back over to this one. I can do it here just as well, Dana. Or can you, Dana? I don't know, man. Hang on. It's just because now that model you were just looking at, that's that model there. It's based upon 40 days. 
Now it's only based upon a couple of releases from a single, a couple of days releases from a single reactor. That's Unit Three, or that's uh, Fukushima. Had a 9.0 earthquake shook the country for six minutes. Six minutes. That's eternity. Try shaking. Imagine a stranger picking your child up and shaking her for six minutes. Do you think they're going to get the opportunity to get that six minutes before a stranger comes up, with, let alone you, and stops them? But this is a shaking about one, two, and three Gs. Now, after one G, you can barely... At one G, you can barely stand up, but at two G, or just after one G, it's impossible to stand up. So it's uh, 7,000 times more stronger than Christchurch in New Zealand, and it was 1,000 times worse than Haiti. The earthquake was felt in Florida 30 minutes later, and it spawned a tsunami. A tsunami kills hundreds of thousands of birds in Australia. Uh, the Epic Center was about 100 miles, 180 miles wide, and it, the country dropped about three feet and shifted to the northeast, I think it was, uh, about six feet. So it went three feet down at the same time, it went north. So you can imagine trying to walk and stand up and getting shifted when the whole country is doing that. Because everything got picked up over here. All your real estate is now six feet northeast and three feet lower. Amazing, incredible, unbelievable Unimaginable earthquake. Tremors, you had three within 40 minutes that were over seven. Seven's a devastating earthquake. The tsunami took out... Let me get everything ready for you. Because we can cover so many friggin' topics. It's shocking what we can actually cover if we want to tell. Because we can go way down the rabbit hole with the best of them. Hang on, I'm going to bring you over to this one. Which you're probably already on, so let's boot that one to the left. And over here. Tsunami height throughout the country. Even on the east side of the country, look at that. Tsunami showed up on the east side too. There's nuclear plants all throughout that whole region you're looking at. But the one we're going to talk about is where all the people died. So we know there was huge amounts of releases in that area. And hang on a second. Let me give you some ideas of what we're talking about here. That's what we're talking about for debris. We're talking about hell on earth. We're talking about the tsunami. Right, the tsunami killed people throughout the coastline for over 400 kilometers. Nuclear power, and there's nuclear power plants throughout that coastline. And let me find a good one for you. There you go. That's the nuclear power plants in Japan. And that's nuclear power plants in Japan. Another way of looking at it. And then look at the tsunami throughout Japan. But when you look at it, you don't think much of it. But look at how many people died. These are people that died in each of those areas, those red dots. Those, I know they're not dots. Send your hate mail to Dan and Dern for that. Hotmail.com. Dun 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 between the dot and the square. <laughs> Gonna chop that out and use it to beat them up later. Don't care to tell you about all the other stuff. No, just find something where I made a mistake. Use that. Come out and destroy me. Try to destroy me and vilify me and attack me. Not that I care. I really don't care. Because I'm not going away. I'm not giving it up. I'm not going to sit here with a bunch of little freaks getting a paycheck are allowed to run rampant on our planet. It's just, it's wrong in every way possible. Okay, all right. So you've seen the map of the damage along the coastline. You've seen the map of where all the plants were. Then maybe this headline coming up will make some sense. Wikipedia, 15 reactors in the areas affected by 311 quake. The Tokai Dainé took four days to achieve coal shutdown. It didn't. It didn't, it couldn't, it wouldn't. Because, um, and, 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 I do this so often. Because, let me keep going over here. Because that tsunami came through the whole coastline. The plants blew up, they detonated, they melted down. Oh, I screwed that one really good. 
Oh, well, now, now I'm smurfed. Now I'll never find my spot again. Hang on. Here we are. They melted down. That's unit one. That's 100% meltdown, melt through, melt out. This is... On the roof of it was fuel pools full of the old reactors. The reactors hold 3,840 assemblies. There's around 80, rod, 80 rods in each assembly. Each rod is 18 pounds and 12 feet long. That's over 5 million pounds per reactor. Do you think they had that capacity for all those reactors and never ran them at full tilt? They store everything on each of the individual sites. But yet they tell us there's only around 1,100 rods. What they're worried about when we when they admit now that number two, for instance, is all gone. But number three had some air tightness issues. Okay, number three is totally 100% com completely destroyed. But number two is 100% lost and is still intact. Right, and so then they come up and show you number four. They tore it all off. The fuel pools were on the roof. The reactor was about halfway up that. They showed us this picture here and that picture there and said it was inside of that building there. But if you look at all the documentation that we got, you know, at the, at the nuclearproctologist.org, you'll find all kinds of sections with all kinds of pictures. You can make up your own mind. Is it better for you to make up your own mind? You know, like I can help you by showing you the difference and showing you what the law was. You can go check into it. They showed you that. They showed you that. And like anybody don't believe me, right? You got to think about it. The, the picture closest to me is the one that I put there. The one they're showing you is what they say it looks like on the inside. Here's BBC News doing the same thing. They're closest to me. The, the, the picture's far away are the ones I put there. That was a, that was a pile of them. Uh, CBC telling you that it looks beautiful on the inside, but look at the Billy. Look at the pictures far away from me on the far right hand side. How can you have one like they're showing you inside the other one? See, and so they they all knew better. They come out and lie to you because they didn't want you to work out. Here's Tepco. Here's motherboards showing you. Nobody could ask the question of how do you get that inside of the destroyed buildings. Why well, was so hard about that? How come any media on the planet could come in and say, hey, wait a second, I don't know how the fuck you got that inside of that. I can't wrap my mind around it. When the whole country was like that, remember these three buildings, they produced 9 million bags. So let's go back to the ocean. These three buildings produced 9 million eggs. Bags. Eggs. Blah. 9 million bags for three buildings. We'll say four, because building four. That's all gone. It lost its entire inventory. That's why they come out and tell you the big lie. Over and over and over. Everywhere in the media like I just showed you. Oh, it's beautiful in there. No, it wasn't. It'll never be. You can't get inside of Chernobyl. Why is your media allowed to do that? Because they think you're an idiot. They think you're a moron. They think you're incapable of understanding it. Well, they, they're right because they got all the lawyers and all the key positions. Like University of Victoria and British Columbia, Canada... Just put a gag order on me. I can't talk about them or Woods Hole. It's a slap suit. A slap lawsuit against public participation. It's meant to destroy you and wreck you and make you spend all your money and they got no intentions of actually going to trial. I mean, if you look at if you look at the court papers, they stalked me from the 28th of uh, January 2014, they tried to press charges against me. Police wouldn't do it. And they tried again in September of that year. Police wouldn't do it. And then they came up with a slap suit against me through a judicial. But uh, the second time they tried to press charges against me for talking about them, saying they're lawyers. That's all I'm doing, telling they're lawyers. The media came in and accused me of death threats. And the people I'm accused of knows that's not true, knows I'm charged with criminal harassment. Which is slap suit. That's a slap suit, see? It's been used very little only for that one purpose to, to shut down dissent. It's kind of like a sedition charge. It's the equivalent to sedition. He went to the police repeatedly and tried to get me charged. Couldn't get me charged. And then the desperation came out and done this one and got me thrown in a jail cell for 12 hours and demonized me in the media for something I didn't do. 
And then they put that up on their blogs, accusing me that I, I was charged with death threats when I'm charged with criminal harassment. Like when this is all over, someone's going to get a few teeth knocked down their fucking throat when I catch them. And I'm going to catch them. I'm going to catch them. I'm going to go to jail for it for sure. But there's a few people out there are going to catch up with you. <laughs> My sugars ain't got 9,000 chemicals. And I pull a hockey sweater over your head and a couple of uppercuts. But let the jury decide whether you deserved it or not for what you've done to me. Because it looks like I'll never get you into court. I can't raise enough money. They're attacking me endlessly. They'd rather go donate to Greenpeace than someone like me who done 260 days on the ocean and got all the documentation and goes toe-to-toe -to -toe against the people. We live in a spineless, spineless fucking world. Spineless. I'd have all these fuckers on their back right now if I had enough funding to do it. I'd put the operation together in a heartbeat. We'd wreck all of these people. Team of lawyers. I'd destroy them, and by destroying them, we destroy their narratives and all the media that carried it at the same time. It's common. I'm going to get my own way at some point. Uranium-234 detected in Hawaii, Southern California, and Seattle. Can't get any great big media to carry me. That's not true. Jeff Rince got me up there anyway. Thank goodness. Radioactive iodine in San Francisco. 18,000 above drinking water standards. But that's just a tracer. That meant everything else was there. Betrayal. Let me get back to the Pacific coming up. Vancouver, Canada. Radiation test showed iodine in rainwater at 100 times above drinking water. So there was 10 times more 132. 30 times more 133. 31 times more 129. There was uranium, plutonium for sure. If that showed up, everything else did. Game over. But all the nuclear PR firms, there's around 2,000 of them. They run rapid out there. You say Fukushima, they'll hunt you down and they'll argue with you for a fucking week. Oh, you're brainwashed. Oh, you're stupid. Oh, you're conspiracy theorists. Because no one will hold them accountable. Just evil. Fucking evil. Nuclear PR firms are why the Pacific Ocean has died. Yeah, the Pacific Ocean is dead. We went out and showed that, right? Pacific Ocean is dead. The phytoplankton, the basis of the food chain, the carbon sequestering, the oxygen sequestering chain is gone. Gone. Krill is gone. You got any fucking idea how important that one is? That's why all the whales are starving to death. That's why all the oclets are starving to death. That's why all the pelicans didn't breed. That's why the squid failed, the sardines, the herring, the salmon. All of this has failed because of the phytoplankton and the krill and the anchovies and the sardines. And so this week, we're going to see too many more mass die-offs because they're almost all gone. We showed that in our documentation. You can find it up at the nuclearproctologist.org. We documented the extinction event of the coastline of Canada. And you can't have a, you know, all those species are missing on the coastline. The other four million didn't receive the coastline. Okay, I got some other stuff for you. Hang on, here we go. I got more, 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 more. Let me get rid of that. Let me get rid of that. Let me bring up. Let me bring up. Oh, yeah, right. I got it. They're sitting there. Worst wildlife die off ever recorded. They didn't record nothing. They didn't record anything. Nobody went into the tidal zones. That's the nursery of the ocean. The only people that done that was Dana and the hounds of Fukushima. We're the only people that done that. They won't go near it. Oh, the starfish are missing. Shut your pie hole. Cowards, man. It's heartbreaking. Cowards. When it's all gone, they'll say, oh, there's some damage out there. I'll show you some damage coming up. I'm tired of it now. It's fucking war now from here on out. Carcasses littering beaches for miles on the Pacific coast of Alaska. Alaska. What's the date on that? January 13th, 2016. Sick and animals aren't like anything doctors have ever seen. They're eating themselves from the inside. Cancers, liver, pancreas, intestines are shutting down. Infested with parasites, immune to antibiotics, unprecedented, catastrophic loss of 200,000 sea lions. Unbelievable! They starve to death. Their stomachs are full of rocks. 
There's nothing on the rocks. Normally, we'd eat the rocks, suck the nutrients to 600 algae, to 70 species of sponges, to 480 species of worms, all the other stuff that's in there, the invertebrates, the 6,500 without the backbones, like the little shrimp. They would have sucked all that up for nutrients and they would have been okay. But it's all gone. Baby whales dying, they all starved to death. Everything we see in is starved to death. Because all the bases, the food chain got killed off right away. Because we never tried to stop Fukushima. Because the nuclear PR firms and your public media, your mainstream media, come out and tell you not to worry. That's why nothing, That's why we never had an opportunity. That's why we never had a chance. It's because the media and your universities kept telling you, oh no, it's like a banana, it's like a potato chip. They're still doing it. Nuclear site would have less radiation than bananas. That's for Australia. Like it's, like it's okay to want to go punch, I'm not saying go punch him in the mouth, but it's okay to want to punch him in the fucking mouth. I got no problem saying that. It's okay to want to do it. I'm not saying go fucking do it. I might do it though. Some point in the future, you should arrest me for thought crime. You'll be wanting to do it. Your children will be wanting to punch you in the fucking mouth soon because you didn't do nothing because you demonized people like me. To the fucking trolls out there. The nuclear PR paid trolls. Your children will be punching you in the fucking mouth before you get a chance to do it to you. I'll do it to you whoever catches you. Any one of you. I don't give a fuck who you are. You're with the nuclear industry. I'll get my hands on you. You're losing a couple of fucking teeth. Yeah, I might go to jail. I don't give a fuck. I don't care. I'll bash you fucking good. I catch you. Officials say I was like getting on an airplane. See, and I, I'm only saying that because when I read this headline, that's from your fucking media. The Daily News. Go down and call them a cocksucker to their faces. Not that that's a bad thing, but go down and call them something to their faces. I shouldn't say those words because... Nothing wrong with that one. It's go down and call them cowards to their faces. Say, look, you said it was like a banana. There's no such thing. It doesn't work that way. Wherever you're packaging it, you're wasting radiation throughout the whole country. You can't have a waste facility without packaging it somewhere else. You don't bother mentioning that. Right? Then they say, oh no, at the site when it's finally there, you're like a banana. It's still not like a banana. It's homeostasis. Your body equalizes. If you eat potassium 40, you fucking off gas the same amount. If it's man made, you sequester it in your organs, in your muscles, in your bones. <coughs> Let me keep going. You get pretty cranky sometimes. Can't handle the lies, eh? I can't handle the liars. That's why I do what I do. Besides the extinction event playing out in the Pacific Ocean. That's not the one. Hang on. Baby whales dying. I mean, uh, hang on. Nearly 300 whales last year. One fucking spot. 200 whales in New Zealand. 200 whales. 200. Starved to death. Check them for parasites. Check them for diseases. Check them for infections. Check them for mercury. Don't find nothing wrong with them. Don't bother mention Fukushima. Why bother mentioning Fukushima? How can you ever trust any of these people ever again? If that's your family doing that, is in the media, coming out telling all those lies. There's another headline for you. 337 whales beached the largest stranding ever. Largest stranding ever, ever, ever. Not sure about that one, but I was trying to look it up. Scientists found 337 dead whales. What's the chance they're going to starve to death too? Because everything is pointing to that, right? Everything is pointing to that. Let's keep going. Cargus is walking out, washing up in beaches in U.S., Canada, Mexico. Abnormal blood clots formation in the hearts and lungs. That's one of them. Huge amount of radiation pouring out. Very serious for Pacific Ocean. Journalists withholding shocking information. We must invent no science for unprecedented catastrophe. Nobody even talks about Fukushima. We don't. Government warns public to expect alarming increases in death on the West Coast. Fish are just too hard to find. I just done 260 days on the ocean. 15,000 miles showed an extinction event. And then... These fuckers come out and say, 
Oh, mass die after everybody's out there screaming. No one, no one's mentioning Dana and the Hounds of Fukushima, and that we already documented. It's already shown. It's time to stop the reactors in Japan. It's time to burn six million people up. Uh, you know, sacrifice six million people. Because otherwise we're going to lose the entire fucking planet. The entire planet. We just lost the Pacific Ocean. It's gone. Alpha particles nearly a thousand times normal. Including plutonium. Record levels of Fukushima radiation. Massive plume was over a thousand miles. Unstoppable contamination of the Pacific Ocean is menacing the U.S. West Coast. Fukushima now undeniably. What do you mean now undeniably? What the fuck does that even mean? I went out there and showed this entire friggin' planet that instead of looking like that, it's now like that throughout the whole friggin' coastline. The whole coastline. Hang on. Like, this is so serious because they would rather smear me than talk about the research. None of them can go out and do the research as long as I exist, as long as my materials are there to come out and try to smear me. 15,000 miles of the coastline in a little dinky. You got any idea of the suffering that I had to do to do that and that everybody else had to do, suffered, so I could go do that? People had to suffer, as far as I'm concerned, they must have, in order to fund that operation for me to go out there and show the extinction event was really happening. We didn't, we didn't know for sure. Right, and I like the four million other species didn't recede the coastline. Think about how Smithsonian and uh, National Geographic so far urchins die off at four sites along 200 miles, and because of that, they declared a mass mortality for sea urchins. Dana and the Hounds went out there and covered 15,000 miles, 260 days. Because there was no way I can come back without the data. Whether it was good or bad, we had to know. And like earlier in the video, for anybody that's not, that's joining us later, I showed all the pictures of the coastline. Instead of looking like that, symmetrically through that whole coastline, is now roughly like that. Instead of like that, and these pictures are from that same spot, Louise Narrows, the top of the arrows up there on the outside, closest to me, roughly, is where I'm talking about. So we're up in the middle of nowhere, and everything is missing. And instead, what they got what they got done to us is they're running out with the media, and the media comes out with a headline, right, and CBC, who I interviewed, two 20-minute interviews with CBC, they never even fucking quoted me. King 5 News, he said I wasn't a scientist. I'm a researcher, I worked at every industry, I got... 14,000 hours more underwater than Woods Hole or Uvic scientists that accuse me of death threats when I'm only charged with criminal harassment in order to, to smear me on purpose. This was on purpose. It's called a slap suit. 100% on purpose to try to attack me. And not try to, but they, they smeared me throughout North America and even in Japan in the media. They made me take down 300 of these presentations. ABC, Alaska, King 5 knows. Why would you want to trust these people anymore? What's the sense of trusting these people when they won't even consider Fukushima as a problem? No, I can't say that. can't say Fukushima. I can guarantee you, we'll never forget you. We won't forget what you're doing. We won't forget what you, Vic, done. Now, the people that played the part in it. We're not going to forget the prosecutor, or the judge, or the police that played the part in that. We're not going to forget the nuclear industry. We're not going to forgive the nuclear PR firms. Nobody is. It's not just us. This whole planet is coming after you. This entire planet is going to be coming looking for your fucking heads. I'm going to say it's that one and that one and that one and that one. Go get them. Yeah, no problem with it. Wave of radiation 10 times more than the entire world's nuclear test combined. <clears throat> Chernobyl lasted 10 days. Fukushima didn't stop. Chernobyl was equal to 400 Hiroshima bombs. You still can't eat the meat or sell the milk or, drink or, or sell the land in parts of Ireland, Scotland, and UK because of Chernobyl. It only lasted 10 days. Fukushima has four full meltdowns. Chernobyl is one-third the size of any of the reactors. Chernobyl was graphite. Chernobyl was a 30% meltdown. 
Fukushima had fuel pools full of reactors on the roof. Fukushima's killed the Pacific. Killed it. Former Japanese official. Alarming signs of ocean distress on the west coast. Record numbers again. Begs the skins and bones. Begs the skins and bones. The anchovies, the squid, the sardines, the herring. It's all friggin' gone. All, all the invertebrates, all the little world, all the little animals that live in the tidal zones, in their nursery is gone. There's nothing for them to eat. Normally, they can just pick up rocks and suck the rocks down to them, digest the, the nutrients, and poop out the rock. But if there's nothing on the rock, it stays in their stomach. They don't have the energy to poop it out. Giant whales fire, found piled up dead on the west coast beach. I was up in Bella Bella. We spent eight days there on the expedition for life. Those pictures are up at the nuclear proctologist. Showing an extinction event playing out on the coastline. Less than 100 species left out of 4.2 million. Worst ever alarm over shocking crash of salmon population in the Pacific Northwest. Well, there's no snow in the mountains of British Columbia anymore. The ice pack is gone, I should say. There's snow there. There'll always be snow there for a while anyway, I'm sure. There's winter, we'll have snow there, but that's not ice pack. Ice pack took a thousand to ten thousand years to form. That regulated the temperatures of the rivers and the lakes and the estuaries, the cold water running down. And that also raised the level of the, the lakes, the rivers, and the estuaries. Zoe snoring. <laughs> Sounded like a little siren that time. And so that snow melt, the salmon weren't able to go up the river. They laid their eggs in front. In the estuaries out at the seaside, they've never done that before. No one's ever seen them do that before. The animals along the coastline are starving to death. The beers were only pooping out apples. All the berries failed, the salmon failed, the trout failed. Because there's no ice in the mountains to regulate it anyway. You need a certain temperature. Without the ice water, you don't got that temperature. I went up through, I got a, a bath every day on the coastline of Canada somewhere. I got in a little dinky, went ashore, found a little estuary river, and I walked up, and at the same time, I took my camera, and I went looking for spider webs. And I probably found a dozen spider webs. They were deformed. There was no birds chattering in the forest at any time. It was silent. No insects bugging me, biting me, chasing me, haunting me. At all. Throughout the whole coastline, right through summer on top of that. No starfish. No sea anemones. There's 78 species of sea anemones. Each species come in multiple colors. All gone. All the bases of the food chain, gone. Everything else has to die. There will be no whales left at the end of this year, 2016. Let's get, let's, let's get through a few more. Former Japanese uncontrolled chain reaction underway at Fukushima. Chernobyl stopped after 10 days, turned to an elephant foot, right? Fukushima didn't. Like, and see, that's why a Chernobyl for 10 days was equal to 400 Hiroshima bombs because it's cannibalizing. The chain reaction is cannibalizing. It's not like a bomb blew up. The chain reaction is cannibalizing everything. Water that you're pouring out on top of that, and atomizing, aerosoling, ionizing and radiating that back into the environment. I got three teeth are falling out. And I'm losing the hair. You can hear it when I'm talking. That one's ready to come out now. You just wiggle it. I don't know what's going on. Not good though, I'm sure. Headlines. Millions of salmon mystery mysteriously just disappeared off the west coast. Literally within two days it disappeared. Now that was Rupert. I was up there and done that whole coastline. Everything is missing there. There's no, like you would starve to death anywhere on the coastline of British Columbia. You will starve to death. You and your children, you will starve to death that day. You'll have nothing to eat. It's downhill from there on after. You'll starve to death if you try. Like normally you can go anywhere, pick out a cubic meter, and you're going to eat right there all week long. Now the whole coastline, you would starve to death. The kelp that I've seen for most of the coastline, you would fit in the back of a five-ton truck if you took it all. That's after 15,000 miles, 260 days. You can put all the kelp and all the life that you saw, 
in the back of a single pickup truck. Yeah, they're going to do me. We know that's going to happen. We knew this was going to happen to me anyway, right? That they're going to do me. And so we're not going to let that stop us. We'll keep going as long as we can. Researcher says massive decline of fish is thrown off the ecosystem. And that the population is truly collapsed. And the whale numbers are dropping significantly. And squid are disappearing and other major die-offs have been seen. And the date on that one was um, November 3rd, 2015. And so we'll post a higher quality to this one up at Beautiful Girl by Dana on YouTube. Uh, that account was frozen on me, but we can't post videos there. But when I got out of jail, I had four strikes on that account. Um, Global Mail, which sells uranium stock, come out and deem, with the biggest paper in Canada, demonized me throughout Canada. We just done three court appearances in Victoria, far, far away from where I live. It's costing us a fortune. It's bankrupting me. And that's okay. We got all the equipment we needed anyway to do the documentary. And so we'll make it through this next hump. We'll be okay. We'll finish out that documentary and not worry about the rest after that. I'm not going to anyway. I got, I got to get out there and do presentations where it all goes to shit anyway. Try to educate people and get more people aware. More people ready to fight back before they do me in. You know, they're going to do me. It ain't going to be fun. Highest radiation just miles from San Francisco. 20 million in a, in a liter of rainwater. It wasn't just San Francisco, it was the whole North America. Got pounded over and over and over and over and over. And the media hid it away from you. Your job was to tell you, yeah? Your university's job was not to come out and lie to you like Woods Hole and the University of Victoria in British Columbia has done to us. And not attack. Like they stalked me from day one. They were stalking me and trying to get me arrested from day one. The second time they tried to get me arrested was a week before I went on the second expedition. Like they went double time to try to destroy me and he couldn't do it and he came up with, a, with an illegal slap suit and then smeared me in the media because they didn't know what else to do anymore. Because the expeditions were over and I'm trying to produce a documentary and so he wanted to chew up any funding that I had. It's shocking. And who's going to hold him accountable? Nobody. Nobody. I got nobody out there who's going to do it for me. And then I'm considered an e-beggar if I ask for donations. But how the fuck am I ever going to get anything done if I don't raise money? How am I going to ever going to get anything done if people don't always support me? How am I supposed to do that? How is anybody going to do it if someone don't support them? Who the fuck is going to go and do it? You think Trump is going to go do it? You think George Soros is going to go do it? You think any of these rich people are going to do it? I'm going to come and tell you the truth? I can't tell the truth because in the context of widely because I don't have the, the ability, I don't have the money or the monetary to be able to, to build the operation and go do it that way. So that's why I'm trying to produce a documentary. I'm just saying to the big sites out there and to the big people out there that could change the game, you can donate at the Nuclear Proctologist with your credit cards or you can donate at PayPal. We've raised 150 in the last week. There's not going to be any big whoops coming out of that, but it's a, it's a start. I'm not saying don't. I'm not saying that's not helpful because that's better than nutting many times over and I can do a lot with nutting. So I can do a lot with 150 and I do. But like my hopes and dreams is to be able to come out and beat these people. I can't do it if I can't challenge them in their own in their own spirit. I can't come out with advertisement. I can't get out and rent halls for two or three thousand dollars at the drop of a hat so I can have a lecture in the community because I can't I don't have that money, right? And like I need to do 10 of those in a row, so I need to raise 30, 40, 50,000 bucks just to go do that one. But once you start doing it, then you can, you're charging people, you can make the money. But just to get set up and go do it, it's stupid amount of money. But they got me censored out throughout the internet, so that's the only option I see besides the documentary. But even then, you still got to get out there and plug it. Because if not, man, they are just going to wreck you on the internet, control you. And so I have to move out into that spirit at some point. So I'm always going to raise money. I'm going to have a 24-hour e beggar marathon coming up soon. If you want to call me an e beggar there's 90 million people using the same platform as I am. They're all e beggars too. They all got donate buttons, but if I got one, I'm an e beggar right, So anything to defund me, 
everything to defund me to stop me from showing you and telling people and waking more people up and being able to handle them and being able to, to pay lawyers to go destroy them and arrest them and convict them. Because I will. I will. I'm having them one way or another. But at the same time, I'm having... I got worries that they, they already done me. I got worries they poisoned me. And that's what I think is going on. Why else am I losing teeth and losing hair like I am? Just like that. Over the last three weeks, all of a sudden I got three teeth falling out. It's bizarre. I brush my teeth all the time. I take good care of them. Shouldn't be happening, right? But I can't even afford to go to see a dentist. So They got me. I'm as broken now. Trips down to Vancouver and all the other stuff they got done to me and, and wrecked my other computer and we had to burn all that money on this and equipment to try to... It's just shocking what they done to us. It was strategic. It was on purpose. It was, it was strategically set up to destroy me and if not to at least defund me and if not to at least marginalize me and vilify me and victimize me and smear me and so then... Everything rides on, does he, well, we won't know, well, I'm not going to donate because he's not, he hasn't won his case or something. He could be guilty, you know, he could be just a lawyer. But I've done 260 days on the coastline, 15,000 miles, the pictures are mostly up at the nuclear proctologist there already. I've done everything I said I was going to do. And I'll do everything I say I will do if I get the opportunity, if I can launch another expedition of this type. I'll have advertisement in newspapers all over the planet in Jig's time if I can raise the money. You got no idea the stuff I got sitting there I want to get done. My cigarettes don't got 7,000 chemicals. 7,000 chemicals in your average cigarette. Mine don't. That's how much you got your brainwashed. Nicotine is bad. 7,000 chemicals is probably worse than that. What do you think? Would you rather have a cigarette? If you've got a choice, you got to smoke one or the other. One with, with, with just nicotine or one with 7,000 chemicals. Why, why, why did he do that? Why would you put 7,000 chemicals in a cigarette? Who the fuck are you people? Why the fuck are you like that? How did that become acceptable? Who let you off the hook? Why did the government just give you a free pass? Who's there to protect us? Who? Obviously not the people we thought. They let 7,000 chemicals put in a cigarette. And then they demonize people for smoking it. How are you supposed to kick 7,000 chemicals? I'm not the bad person. How the hell did I become the bad person for doing 260 days on the ocean, documenting the coastline? How did taking pictures of the coastline somehow equate me with uttering death threats and everything else? It's political hyperbole to say I want to fucking hang you. It's political hyperbole in this context to say, you said it to me, I'll give you a smack in the fucking mouth. I'm a Canadian. What do you expect me to say? That's what I'm taught in Canada. That's how you talk in Canada. Get over it. Grow the fuck up. And the people who don't like what I said, then I give you a smack in the fucking mouth too if I catch you. The elephant in the room is Fukushima. And when it comes to Pacific Ocean animal die off, government has totally failed to inform public. What do you and your friends say to each other all the time? Shut up or I give you a smack in the mouth. What do you and your brothers or your sisters say all the time? Shut up or I give you a smack in the fucking mouth. But Dana says that about a nuclear apologist who just told people to go ahead and eat stuff that's poison, which is murder. That's going to kill him. That's murder. If I gave you a known poison, told you it wasn't going to harm you, and everybody watch you eat it and die, I get, I'd probably get charged, right? That's what UVic is doing. They're telling everybody to go ahead and eat the radiated fish because there's more natural there than there was man-made. This is not about freedom of speech. This is about stopping the murder. This is about stopping these murderers. This is about holding the murderers accountable. This is about holding the nuclear murder and PR firms accountable on top of that. This is about holding your academics who are, who are shitheads, shitlegs, bootlicking, cheerleading laptops for the nuclear industry for the mass murder machine, hold them accountable. That has to be done. That's what our objective thing to do. Ocean die-off. October 20th, 2015, unpublished government map. Massive plume of Fukushima... Fukushima radioactive materials just off the west coast of North America. Professor, it's really a dead zone. That's what my fucking mouth feels like a dead zone now. How many more teeth will I lose by this time next week, I wonder?
What did it get done to me? Babies being found severely emaciated and sickened by parasites. Parasites never seen before washing up on the West Coast. Okay, that's enough of that, I guess. Look, all I'm saying is that you guys are ready to take on this beast. And as long as I'm still around before he finishes me off, I like to get a few giggly diggly digs in myself. And so I'm going to keep going until I can't. It's not feasible for me to go anymore until I'm too sick or feeble to do it anymore because we knows what they're going to do to me. We knows what they already done to me. Usually when they come out and demonize you like they done with me, they kill you. They suicide you or something, right? I'm incapable of suicide. I got every reason to live. I got a lot of payback to get finished up with before I'm ready to go. My time is a long way away. I got. I want to deal with all these fuckers before I go. And so they're intending up on getting rid of me. That's what was normally how you would do it. Come out and demonize you in the media. Vilify you, get you arrested, claim you got depressed and committed suicide. Well, when you're committing suicide, do you lose three teeth and a bunch of your hair in a couple of days? Is that what happens before you have suicide? <laughs> Be them in trouble. Just saying, man. It is what it is, okay? I accept it for what it is. And so I'll be pounding like I am every day that I get an opportunity to come out and bang into these figures. We still got to go to court. We still got to go down there and shake a leg. And we have to get a hotel down there for five or six days. And 16 lawyers. I can't get a lawyer. Now they're going to have to repoint one to me. You got them in the court records, stalking me, stalking me, stalking me for a year and a half, stalking me. They didn't go into the title zones because they know there's nothing there. They know, see? And they know that I would work it out, or at least they figured there's a possibility. I got the history, see? And so that's why they were trying to get me arrested and, and smear me before we went and done it, right? It's fucking heartbreaking that people done that to me. It's heartbreaking. You feel like humanity has betrayed you. You know that your institutions, your universities, like the University of Victoria done that to me in British Columbia, Canada. Stalked me. Contacted the police and tried to get me arrested repeatedly. It's in that documentation. I read it in the last video for people. It's hard to talk tonight. Fucking mood is all fucked up, eh? I ain't got cavities either. They're not cavities. Pricks, boy. Whatever. That's life. Hugs for everybody. Delamine. Albert. Starlight. Yeah, they're stalking me, Starlight. Yeah. Hugs, Josh. Everybody. Lewis, Strontium, CJ, Nep Killer, Albert, Pam, Strontium, Sylvia, hi everybody, I'm just saying goodnight to everybody, Gil. He says, you guys are typing. This tries to go back up to the beginning. Hi, Black. Black Blade. And we know Elaine is there. Joseph. I haven't got my glasses on either, so I can't see jack shit. Yeah, the Cassini Ocklets were on thousands of beaches. Jack, yeah, no, I know. They starved to death, right? They're dependent upon the krill and the pods and that. All the species we see dying off starved to death. They starved to death. Literally, they were healthy. No parasites, no toxins, no diseases. And they died. They starved to death in mass. We've seen the polar bears the same thing. Emaciated. One polar bear went 700 miles. The scientists followed him for 700 miles. 
That polar bear had the deepest dive and the longest swims for a polar bear. And it starved to death. Big mass of 1,100 pound animal down to about 350 pounds, nothing but bones and fur. I've seen polar bears most of my life. I come from that land. And I've never seen a emaciated polar bear in my entire life. And we've seen several in different countries in the last year. Because they're starving to death too. Everything else is starving to death on the coastline. And it's really shocking. Colloidal silver. Yeah, good one. Uh, these are not toothaches. These are teeth falling out of my friggin' head. Just falling out. They're not cavities. They're not toothaches. It's like my hair is falling out. Same thing. It's coming out in comfuls. Fucker's probably done me. Hugs for everybody. We'll be back on a regular schedule for a little while, hopefully, and then we're back down to court on the 10th of February. Blah, blah, blah. Okay, we'll see everybody soon. Hugs for everybody. Good night, everybody. Thanks for showing up, and we'll catch everybody when we get an opportunity. It's a, it's a big struggle I'm going through, but we're getting there. We're working hard at it every day, all day. I don't stop. And so that ain't going to stop anytime soon unless I do. <laughs> we'll be working hard to try to avoid that. Hugs for everybody. Take care, folks.